Ranger. This is just a quick video. These were the um, Japanese larch trees I bought online. Not a very successful venture. But looking at them now, they seem to be pushing some buds out in some different places because most of the new growths on here died. You can see they're shriveled. Um, basically, if I'd known it was in Northern Ireland, I wouldn't have used the nursery, but I missed that point. And it shouldn't have made a difference. It's part of the UK. But because the seller didn't get on and dispatch the items, they ended up getting dispatched towards the end of the week instead of at the beginning. And as a consequence, they spent the weekend in the depot. They arrived eventually, which is sort of, you know, as things do. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do a lot. Basically, the roots are in moss at the moment, just to, just to hydrate them. They stood in water for a while. Now they're basically in some damp moss to, just to keep them moist. I need to get them in some media um, if they're ever going to stand a chance of growing. So I'm not going to attempt to make these into bonsai by any means. I just want to get them in something. Um, now this pot's just lying around doing nothing. It's a smashing pot. It's not, not, a, you know, not an expensive one, although it was made in Japan. Um, I can't remember where I got it. But the colours are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And all I'm doing is using it as something to put these in. I'm not attempting to do bonsai today, strictly speaking. I'm just putting trees in a pot. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. The main reason is, as I said, I, I, I need to try and get the plants to start growing and to start branching their root systems out. The hydrophobia just kicked in. <laughs> so that's all I'm really doing is getting the roots in some media today. That's, that'll do. All I'm doing now is just making little butterflies to uh, go over the large drainage holes. They are big on this one. Get that through to the bottom of the pot. And then just bend them over. Just holds that little thing in place. I'm using up some um, old bits of wire in the drawer at the moment. And this wire really is a bit thick for the job. But I've just got lots of little pieces lying around that are doing nothing. And they're ideal to get buried in a pot where I'll never see them again. Well, not for a long time, anyway. Not for a long time. All these are is just little butterfly loops that then go through the, um, the mesh. And then the little tails go through the hole in the pot. Some people put them up the other way. They put the wire up from underneath so that the tails come up inside the pot. Um, they say that they keep catching their delicate little fingers on the spiky bits. I don't worry about such things. <laughs> Everyone I've ever seen has always done it that way. And so I've just followed suit, basically. Right, so that should stop the media falling out. get some media in here which is all on the floor at the moment. In here we have some grit because all my media is out in the carport and I can't be bothered to keep running out there all the time. Now somewhere here we should have a lid that comes off. No it's not ice cream, no you can't have an ice cream. <laughs> it's just an empty container that serves a useful purpose. So I'm, I'm putting a layer of grit on, that's for drainage. That's all it's for. This is um, quite a fine grit. Um, other times I've bought grit, it's, um, it's chunkier than that. But it doesn't matter. Because it's made of stones, it doesn't hold water. The water goes straight through it, basically. Right, so that's a layer of that. And then in here, we have all the other ingredients that I use for my media stirred up. Shaken, not stirred, sorry. <laughs> so this is a mixture, same sort of stuff has gone in here as has in other mixtures. So you can always look back to other videos where I potted things, where I've actually shown the ingredients. Uh, 
If I think about it, I'll put an end screen to one of those so that you can see the component parts. But uh, all I'm going to do now is put a layer on. Now, if this was a single tree and I was doing a bonsai, I'd have a mound in the middle. But I'm not. So I won't. <laughs> it's just a layer, basically. I'm not even going to wire the trees in. Right, we'll put that to one side. Put a layer on here. Now let's get these trees out and see what we're working with. As I said, I was uh, quite disappointed when these arrived. And I got them out of the, the, you know, the bag, their confinement. And I mean, as you can see, these little shoots should be a lovely bright green and they're not. But there are some other buds that haven't opened yet that I'm hoping will shoot out. All I can do is hope. Um, as I said, they're, you know, I was quite disappointed. So then what we've got are quite large root systems, yes. Um, and what I've got to try and do is spread these root systems out flat. So that as they grow in the future, I'm also going to trim them and spread, try and spread them out flat so that as these roots get bigger and bigger, they will form a nice base to the plant. Uh, I think I'll take the tap root off. There's a large tap root on the bottom. We'll take that off for a start. Just give these a trim. So say there's uh, the, the roots are going to oh, use my scissors, I suppose. Ah, my secateurs just need sharpening. And um, when I moved house, unfortunately, my sharpening stone went missing. The trouble is, my sisters started to clear the house prior to me getting all my stuff out. And then, you know, my sister said, well, what, what's left that's yours then? And when you're trying to visualise things like that, you end up getting some of it wrong, don't you? And so some of it went missing, much to my annoyance. Right, that's the tap group. So the fine roots trimmed. As I say, it's going to be a lot less tree when they get in the pot. So the roots don't have to be quite uh, so substantial. See, this is such a waste, the way these have been grown. If these roots had been allowed to go outwards, this would have a lovely base on it, this tree. But they weren't, and they haven't, so we work with what we've got. The problem I've got, you see, is this pot's not very deep. Really, it should be. What I should be doing is planting these in a pot, you know, as in relatively quite a deep pot but because I don't think they're going to make it I can't be bothered so we will just get them in here and spread these roots out and see what we can do I will probably end up having to strap them together just to hold them still and then we'll spread the roots out best we can so that they've got uh, something to grow into. Something like that. And then I'm just going to bury those roots and um, hope that they start to grow. There will be signs of life on the trees themselves if this works. As I said, I don't believe it will. That's got to be worth a go, hasn't it? I, you know, I sort of bought them now, you just as well try. And then what I'll do is I'll mound this up. Yeah, so that those trunk, uh, those roots that are higher up these uh, sort of trunks have got something to grow into. And then later, if they do decide to grow, when I start to shape them properly, they can go in a deeper pot to be grown on. I just want these in something and out of my way, basically. I'm 
no need to turn this into concrete. Let's make sure it's firm enough. And that there's enough in there to support the trees. And it's not all going to fall out when I water. So half of this has gone on the floor, I think, listening to all those clicky sounds. Right, that'll do. I'll water that in. That'll turn to mud anyway. <laughs> sort of. And then these will go in a place where they don't get blown around with force 8 gales. And they're coming off at a place where there's a suitable branch to become a new leader, should they grow. So I'm looking for a branch that's quite upright. So there's one there, but there's a, there's a knot there. Um, let me zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is so bright in here, my sunglasses have gone dark and I can't see what the camera's pointing at. Hopefully, if I put my finger where I'm working, the camera needs to go up a bit. Somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah, somewhere like that. You can see a bit better. So what I'm looking at on this trunk is four branches coming out at the same place. One of them might make quite a nice extension to the trunk, but it's going to form a knot where those four branches, or three, are close together. There'll be a bit that becomes wider than the rest of the trunk, so I don't want to pick that one. I want to come down lower. And I'm going to pick on that one. So this is coming off there. So that's one done. Not attempting to wire anything, I'm not doing any such things like that. All I am going to do is trim off these tiny little shoots down the base of the tree. Because they wouldn't ever be grown on anyway. And then if these do grow, obviously they'll put what energy they've got, which won't be much, into what's left. Not into what's gone. So that's that one. Right, next one here. Again, I'm looking for a, a branch that could become the next extension to the trunk. I've got these have no relationship. They're not going to become a forest group or anything like that. They will become individual trees. I'm only planting them together because I haven't got three separate pots for them. And they'll, if they're going to grow, they'll grow in here for a year, maybe two. Then we'll deal with them as individual plants. I need a branch that's good enough, that's liable to grow. So this one looks green-ish. And if they're going to grow, they will shoot out again anyway. Let's make this one a little bit taller and come up here. Right. That'll give us more options later on. And again, all I'm going to do is take these uh, lower branches off. I don't want energy going into branches that would never under any stretch of imagination be kept. And any buds that sort of are produced lower down on these trunks will just get rubbed out. All right, let's just spin around a bit. So I'm gonna make this one even bigger. So I'm gonna come up quite high with this one to this branch here and hope that it grows. In actual fact, I'm going to choose that one because that one's the thickest of the three. So we'll take that one off there. That's me, not cutter. So I've left a, I took another branch off as well. I'll just need to take that back. Right. Now we take the branches off. These branches right up here. I'll leave the um, the one that's potentially going to be a trunk quite long, and everything else is going to get cut right back. The main reason is, if these trees are going to grow, I don't want them putting all their energy into buds that I'm not going to keep. So I'm trimming them back hard. To see what they do next, which is probably die. They may pull on. Right, I 
That's that one. This one, leave the leader on that one completely alone. That's you done. So some of these branches appear quite loose against the trunk, and I think I think they were bent to get them in the packaging. I think they were bent, and they may well have um, broken near the base of the uh, tree, near the trunk. Don't know for sure, but uh, we will find out eventually. See, if these are going to grow, then all of these little shoots will become little branches and they will thicken up quite quickly, but it is an if. It's quite a big ask really, considering how much has been uh, lost. Right, chuck some water on that. All right, we've, got, we've got our leader here and we've got another one that we missed. There we go. Right, so I've taken everything back in towards the trunk. So there's a lot less buds for the tree to try and recover now. Um, so what little bit of energy it might be able to uh, muster through that root system, it can put in to the few buds that are left, rather than trying to put all that energy, or that little bit of energy, into all of those buds, because most of them are now gone. Um, I ought to take these leaders back a little bit. We took that one back. We'll take that one back. We'll pick a new, a new branch on there to become an extension of the trunk once we get some shape into these. These are not too thick to bend. So uh, eventually I will put some uh, form, some uh, shape into those uh, trunks. Right, so all that's going to happen to that now is... Um, this is coming off because I know what they are. <laughs> it's actually their uh, plant passport. Now why would they need that? Pray tell. Why would they need a plant passport to go from Northern Ireland to the UK if Northern Ireland is part of the UK? You don't need a plant passport to come from Scotland, I don't think. That was never done right. That bit of Brexit was never done right. It's causing problems still. Anyway, that's it. All I'm going to do is water those now. And I'm going to put them somewhere out of the sun, shaded, and out of the wind, so that the wind doesn't catch them and dislodge them. And we'll see if we get some nice bright green shoots anytime soon. So that's it. That's those done. Um, <laughs> quite honestly, it's a waste of a really nice pot because I doubt if they're going to grow. But we've got to give them a chance, haven't we? Right, that's it. And um, progress on these will be probably next to nothing. If they really start to grow and start pushing strong, they may get another trim this year just to keep them back. Um, however, they may well not make it. We shall see. See you next time.